Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. One of the neatest tools in our shop is the CNC Easy Router. It's a four foot by eight foot monster that can cut and carve woods and plastics. We primarily use it with three quarter inch pine or acrylic or a starboard type material. This video will explain a bit about the machine, what's required to use it, and whether or not this is actually the appropriate machine for your job. First, a little bit about the machine. Like I mentioned already, it has a bed that is 4 feet by 8 feet, and it is a useful travel of about 4 inches in the Z. But we don't typically do three-dimensional contouring, so realistically, its useful Z is about an inch and a half. And this is plenty for what most people want to do, which is cut and carve sheets of plywood and plastic. Speaking of sheets of things, our favorite material is 3 quarter inch plywood. We can't do wood that's thinner than about 3 eighths easily, and we prefer plastics that are at least a quarter inch thick. This is because we don't have a vacuum hold down table and the items that are thin don't screw down very well. What do we screw them to? Oh, well that's our spoil board. It's a piece of medium density fiber board that we allow to get barely eaten into and then it supports the workpiece and keeps it flat. We replace it once it gets worn out. We have two sheets stacked of MDF on the bed and when we screw a part down we only want to use screws that are long enough to hold, but short enough not to penetrate into the lower layer of MDF. So you've got something that you want to make. That's great. But sadly, a CNC job is not as simple as coming in and throwing something in on our lasers. There's a lot more setup that's required and a lot more that can go wrong. When running a CNC job, it needs to be supervised at all times. And that'll be you. You also must be green and yellow certified in order to run a CNC job. We use a program called vCarve to set up our files for the CNC. Much like we use Craftware to prepare 3D files for printing. Running the CNC is easy, but just like 3D printing, setting up the files properly is where most people get into trouble. And that's why only specific Fab Lab staff members will set up and start your CNC job. Because of the time it takes to properly set up and run a CNC job, you need to schedule a time with us in order to do it. You'll need to bring in your file that you want to get cut out, and it can be an Adobe Illustrator file, a DXF, something like that. Then one of the certified staff members will help you set up your file with you and then run your job. You should plan on being here for at least three hours on the first time you run a CNC job. Once your file is set up and double checked by the staff, they will assist you in positioning your part on the machine, show you the basics of how to run it, and more importantly, stop it. It's all quite fun. Here's a quick rundown of how it all works. You'll first make sure that the Mach 3 program is closed, and then you'll turn on the machine right here on the lower right front. You must have the machine on before you load the Mach 3 program. Once Mach 3 loads, you'll hit the reset button, and it should turn green. Check the area to make sure the bed is clear and you'll use the page up arrows to raise the bit well clear of the bed. The arrow keys drive the router along the axes and holding shift while you do makes it go faster. But never run it until it hits a stop. Hitting a stop messes up the entire machine and you'll definitely be getting some strikes. You should drive it near the back left corner. Then you can hit the reference all home button. When it's referencing home, it travels really slowly. So by driving it near the rear first, you can save some time. Once it homes, it's going to race back towards the front left corner because that's where zero zero is. It's a right hand coordinate system with the short X axis toward the door, the long Y axis toward the soundproof wall, and then Z is up. Now is a good time to drive the carriage away from you and place your workpiece on the bed where it should be. Now where it should be varies with whatever layout you specified in vCarve, so it all depends. But typically, we put the edge of the part right here on the corner of our spoil board at zero, zero. Now screw it down, with the screws not long enough to penetrate into the lower spoil board. Also check your file to make sure that you don't put screws anywhere in the router bit's path. You never want the bit to tear through a screw head, it's just not good. For a 4x8 sheet that's flat, you really only need screws in the four corners, but screw locations will be determined by the staff member assisting. Are you sure you have your path set up right? Are you going to run off the wood? 
Are all the cuts where you expect them to be? And what about those screws? Did you put them out of the way? Now is a good time to check. Having just referenced all home, the machine still doesn't know where the top of your part is, so it's going to assume that it's way up here at Z0. Well, you can run the job in the air and watch where it goes to make sure that everything's all right. I always run it in the air if it's a weird or position critical part. The last and most important thing now to know is how to stop it. There are two ways. You can click on the stop button here in the software, which is probably closer to you since you should be sitting right here in this chair the entire time that the job is running. Or you can hit the large emergency stop button on the front corner of the router. The staff member will show you how to then load your G-code and exactly how many times to hit the start button. Watch it go around in the air now and see if it's doing what you think it should be doing. If the staff says it looks okay, then it's time to run it for real. You click the stop button just for practice, and drive the bit up first, just in case. Always drive the bit up before moving the carriage or else you can snap the bit off. Move the carriage close to you and over the workpiece so that you can tell the router where the top of your piece actually is. Grab the aluminum plate from the orange pocket and lay it flat on your workpiece under the router bit. You may want to tap the page down a couple of times to get the bit closer so that you can make sure that you have the plate underneath the bit. Make sure that the wire is on top of the plate and that it's laying flat. Then you can press the Auto Z Setter button. The bit will slowly come down and stop when it touches the plate. The router knows that the plate is a quarter inch thick, so the software compensates for this exact thickness. It's quite ingenious. Then move the computer out of the way and go turn on the dust collector in the corner. Make sure that you have the proper hose connected and plug the other port if no one's using the joiner. And that's it. You're ready to run it again. Click the rewind G-code button to go back to the top if you didn't watch the entire job run, which isn't necessary if you're just stepping down the same path over and over. Then you can hit the start button again and again. The CNC is perfect for many tasks, but not all. So consider what tool you actually need to do your job. And if you think you still need the CNC, email us at innovationhub at ou.edu to schedule an appointment. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and what do you want to make?